FMC is really known. And also make sure Welcome to this edition of AFMC TV. I'm Robin Ledbetter. Thank you so much for joining us. Today I have with me Amy Rogers, and Amy is the Director of Clinical Services for AFMC, and she's also a sexual assault nurse examiner. Yes. Thank you so much for joining me, Amy. Well, thank you for having me. So tell me about your work as a sexual assault examiner. So as a sexual assault um, nurse examiner, I am, um, I take care of sexual assault victims when they want to report a sexual assault that's been that's occurred to them and the examination is all about going through that history taking with them collection of the forensic evidence and just really um, you know attending to their needs and sending them away better than what they came to the center as so important and so specialized. Yes, it is. Forensic nursing is um, a specialized area that requires special education and training as well. You know, because really what um, a forensic nurse is doing is taking care of somebody who's been through a victimization or a traumatization. And um, so it really takes that special education and that training to be able to do that, to offer them the best care possible. And you work with a local crisis intervention center? Yes, I do. In the area where I live, it is that's how um, sexual assaults are handled. The um, victim may go to the hospital, but they will send them to the crisis intervention center for us. And do some hospitals have their own intervention nurses as well? Yes, there may be some areas in Arkansas who may not be close enough to a crisis intervention center where it'd be feasible to send the victim there. So they may still do that in-house. But if they don't have one, any hospital can refer to a crisis center. Yes, and, and preferably, you know, that's what you really want to do. If you don't have your own forensic nurses in-house, seek out a crisis center that's nearby. If, like I said, if that is feasible, because really that's where you're gonna get your specialized care. And that's what you want, you know, for the victim is to be able to offer that specialized care and to uh, um, uh, be able to allow that specialized training to take place as well, because that will help them in the end as well if, this, if those cases go to court. You mentioned specialized training. You're currently going through the certification. What is that? So um, there's a difference between being trained as a forensic nurse and being certified as a sexual nurse examiner. So um, through the International Association of Forensic Nurses is where that certification is obtained. And so um, there's different criteria that you have to meet and um, that's such as being a nurse, you know, registered nurse, or you can be an advanced practice nurse as well and do this. But as long as you're a nurse for uh, two years, and um, you've had um, three ha 300 hours of patient care as well. And um, you've gone through a special training course. So you have to have that to be able to sit for the examination to become certified. And there's not a lot of these specializations in Arkansas. No, um, in fact, the state of Arkansas only has 22 certified uh, sexual assault nurses. And um, there's two different types of certifications. There's a um, certification for an adult and an adolescent patient. That's the area that I work in. There's also um, a certification for prepubescent and adolescent or children as well. And that's um, SANE A and SANE P as they are called. So um, in all, there's, thir there's only 13 adult certified nurses, only 13 pediatric certified nurses, and four of those are dual certified. So that's how we get to the 22 total in Arkansas. Not, not a lot for the whole no, state. No. How prevalent is this work in Arkansas? Um, I would say probably not prevalent enough because we know there are some areas that's not heavy, heavily populated. So those services may not be as available to victims in those areas as well. And um, being the type of nursing that it is and specialized and dealing with the type of um, trauma that you're having to deal with with these victims, it's very hard on a nurse. So um, you, you often see nurses maybe tried out and be like, this is not for me. So um, it, we really need more nurses in this area in Arkansas. So what do you want healthcare providers to know about this specific type of training? 
So um, this specific type of training is um, allows us to offer that victim that specialized care that they need and to um, offer that uh, trauma-informed care and to be able to collect this evidence in a systematic way so that if it does go to court that um, there is uh, credibility in the examination and in that process that we followed because we do have that training. And awareness is so important. Oh, yes, definitely. You know, it kind of goes back to that saying, you don't know if you, you know, you don't know what you don't know. So let's get that awareness out there that these resources are out there for uh, these victims who have been, you know, um, subjected to sexual assault. And there's, you know, there's no shame in coming forth in this and um, that there are resources out there to help them and people that are willing to step out and help them as well. And you touched a little bit about the training and the certification. What training is required? You said there was a certain amount of number of hours. Yes, yes. So for um, the training, it's a 40 hour training class. Uh, they call it a didactic class. So you're learning theory along with hands on as well, because there are some skills that forensic nurses do that, you know, um, a nurse in the acute setting may not be able to do underneath our scope of practice. So it really gets in depth in these specific skills to be able to um, deal with these patients and to be able to collect the evidence as needed. And collecting evidence obviously involves victims. How are victims affected in the process? So um, every victim is different. And really it just goes back to what is this victim's background? Mm -hmm. You know, and um, even to, it goes back to the trauma that they've had to endure as well. You know, uh, you, might, you might expect to somebody come in very tearful you know, because they've just been through this type of experience. But really, you just, you never know because you might take care of somebody who's homeless and their priority is, where is my next meal coming from? Or where am I gonna find shelter tonight? They not may not be worried about the sexual assault that just happened. So um, it's really a dynamic process to be able to meet the needs of each individual as they walk into the center for this examination. So trauma-informed care is so important then. It's an important part about this. Oh, definitely, because like I said um, earlier, you want them to leave better than what they came in as. You know, and part of trauma-informed care is being able as a nurse to, you know, look within ourselves and to put aside our biases when we are treating these patients and so that we offer them the best care possible. And, you know, we, um, you can imagine that they've just been through a very traumatizing experience. They're in a very vulnerable situation and now they're having to come in to this stranger and go through another um, examination, have to tell their story over and over again, not just to me, but to, you know, a police officer or, and then if it goes to court, you know, have to tell their story there as well. So we always want to be able to um, give the patient control because that's what's been taken away from them through this experience is their control. And uh, so we want to offer that back to them, allow them to be the one who is empowered through this process and um, just allow that to take place at their will. You know, oftentimes it feels like they may be coming into a sterile environment and we just wanna make sure that they are comfortable because the least little trigger could, you, you just never know, they could walk into the room that had the same color of carpet as the place where this, you know, incident happened. That could be a trigger. So it's always being mindful of these uh, victims and what they've been through and how can I make this process easier on them. And there, there are also some professional implications for nurses. Yes, there is. Um, you know, dealing with this type of nursing, you can experience vicarious trauma. If you're not able to lay that down when you walk out the door and you take that home with you, that can stay with you as a nurse. And, um, you know, I can think back over the years that I've done this nursing, I've been doing it for almost nine years now. There's some cases, for lack of a better word, that I would say were routine. I may not remember those, but there are some cases that I will never forget 
as well. And, um, you know, that's what you got to be able to put aside and be able to um, implement your own self-care. You know, we talk about offering that to the patients, but we have to turn that on ourselves as well. And as to be able to avoid that vicarious trauma and to be able to avoid burnout as well, because you really don't want to get to the place where you're burnout and you have no motivation or no compassion for these victims. So it's, it's increasingly important to uh, have that self-care as well. And what are the legalities of this profession? So um, there is a possibility that not all cases will go to court, but there will be some that go to court. So since we have the training and the education, we're considered an expert witness. So we can be called to court to testify in these cases. And you think that sometimes you're being called to testify for the victim, but there are times where you may be called to testify against the victim as, as well. And, you know, and that's a very difficult process to have to go through as well, because, you know, they're out to scrutinize your work and how you examine that patient. So that's why it's so important that we, you follow this process and you do it accordingly so that the outcome is correct. And um, you come out with um, not only, um, you know, you avoid a wrongful conviction and you make sure that you get the right conviction as well. So, I mean, if there is a nurse, someone that's interested within the state, how should they go about getting certified for this? So I think probably the first step that they want to take, if they're already working at a facility, reach out to um, their leadership in that facility and find out, do we have this in-house? And if so, you know, perhaps go through those um, lines of communication to to uh, get that established in their own facility. And um, also reach out to a local crisis center as well and see if there's some availability there. Is um, There is a resource and it's just in Arkansas, probably in the last couple of years, forensic nursing has really started to take off. Um, they, um, a group of uh, forensic nurses has developed the Arkansas Forensic Nursing Association. We just had our first conference this last year. So that was really exciting to be a part of that um, inaugural conference for that association. And um, so there's um, a Facebook page for the Arkansas Forensic Nurses Association Nurses Association and um, UAMS Telesane is a good resource as well. And um, like I said earlier, uh, the certification is through International Association of Forensic Nursing. You can also get training through them as well. They have an online course that you can take and get that certification. That's probably the first step is you want to start with that training and then move forward and look for the availability to get into this area of nursing. Okay. And there's a hotline as well? For um, there's for victims, there is a hotline that they can call and um, it is, um, it's safe to call that for sexual assault and is for domestic violence as well. There's a hotline that they can call and reach out to be able to get the assistance that they need if they don't know where to turn, you know, initially. Well, incredible work, Amy, and thank you so much for thank sharing you. your story and, and encouraging others and just the knowledge that the rest of the state should hear. Well, sure. thank you. I thank appreciate you. it. Well, that's it for this edition of AFMC-TV. I'm Robin Ledbetter. Have a great day and thanks for watching.